Welcome back to another episode of Six Life Questions, hosted by your boy Corey G. Today we got Tyler Treadway on the episode. What's up, Tyler? How are you, G? I'm doing great. We're not going to waste any time because we're okay. going right to the life questions. Right. Number one, what is one ritual you are super dedicated to? Like ultimately dedicated. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be work. It can be, you know, play. It can be gym, whatever. But like something that Tyler Treadway is dedicated to um well speaking now would definitely be lunges okay. um i've tried that a few times throughout um and it never kind of stuck because of injuries and then i stopped being a bitch and just kind of <laughs> went with it and now um 160 days and i start to see a lot of kind of other rituals be built because of that so there you go. the daily knowledge um, stuff like that. So that's a new one that I've picked up where every day you have to be learning and it doesn't have to be a podcast or a book. It just, it can be a powerful conversation, but I have a notebook go. that I keep, uh, kind of those notes in. And then, uh, the third one is just keeping track of stuff. So that one I've done ever since I started training, uh, really seriously in like 2011. So I have like something, you know, I might miss a few days here and there, but just tracking everything that's kind of going on training wise and then how I'm feeling life wise, that kind of stuff. So really the, the ritual that's made it the longest is the tracking. Yep. So for the last decade or 11 years, you've written down most days, yep. what you train, maybe even eating what you felt. Do you reflect on it much? Never have I looked at it. Really? Never. So once. what is it for then? Uh, just mental clarity, uh, just to kind of write it down and say, kind of look at what I did. Um, and I, I'm a very visual person, so I yeah. like to write it down and just kind of see the collection of stuff I did. And then the notebooks, I just put them in a closet somewhere and I've never looked at one since. So, uh, my buddy's grandfather, uh, shout out Blaine. He, I think he passed away when he was like 96, but he had a pile of me notebooks, Todd's, Todd's grandpa. And he had wrote every day what was going on at the farm since he became the essential owner when he took it over from his family or bought it. So you're talking about like you could go back September 5th, 1962 and read what the weather was, what he ate, where he planted the fucking oats. It's unbelievable. Hell yeah. And when he passed away, you know, a lot of the – you know, grandkids were sifting through them and he left a really interesting. So like the fact that you've got it going on for like 10 years and haven't looked at it, but somebody at some point or yourself, when you get older, yeah. you will look at it. Yep. That's pretty sweet. Hopefully I'm cool enough that somebody will want to look at it and just see what was going on. <laughs> yeah, that's real cool. You should also, I don't know if you might be doing this now, but like some of the work stuff, the environment that we live in, it's so hard to remember things, yeah. right? This is part of why I like social media because it, it's kind of like a scrapbook for lack of a better way. I can mm -hmm. go back, but it's like when you can make little details that you might not post out right. and something like that, I've done that never consistent enough to call it a ritual, but I'm always glad when I do and I can go back and read it because I'm like, oh, I forgot about that. So I think that if you are if you are doing that, that's like, – yeah be really good and I, I like twitter now to use it kind of like a blog kind of like yeah. that where i'm just like constantly saying there's like things i'm doing because there's so many cool things going on and it's hard to write that sometimes because you yeah. write it and it's like yeah i know that's cool but if somebody were to read this they'd be like what is this you yeah, know what yeah. i mean so i think like the visual stuff like the pictures of stuff helps but yeah. but yeah it's super crazy to document everything that's going on i like it all right number two one thing you're super proud of oh wow <laughs> um couple guys gave a few things man i'm just i'm just proud that i'm in the room that i'm in um coming from we, we both came from very similar places mm -hmm. but i mean you you know just as well as i do that a lot of people don't make it out of there sure um they get trapped in kind of the nuance of living in a small town this is what my parents did um i mean every generation of of treadway lives in mcconnellsville ohio or yep. did live in mcconnellsville ohio and i'm the uh, first one to kind of get out um and kind of do something that's not normal. Um, everyone, it's definitely not normal. <laughs> my, my dad's a custodian and my mom works at a health center. Like yep. everything has always just been about, you know, kind of get to that point and then just live a life where you're looking forward to vacations and there's nothing wrong with that. But I mean, I, I'm thankful every day for the position that I'm in and the room that I'm in. And, um, a lot of people from high school and college and stuff are kind of reaching out now and just like asking what's going on and, um, it's always funny to answer the question of what do you do for a living? <laughs> you got a lot of things that you're helping with right now. So that's a hard answer. Yeah. 
Um, but being proud of really like, and, and Trey kind of lent this too. It's like, you know, what's happening current day mm -hmm. that you're in the mix, you're working you're around people you want to be around and that, um, when you tell, and so that's where I like this question is like, when you explain whatever the answer is of this question, people should be able to feel that you're proud of it. Mm -hmm. Cause some things people might think you're proud of. That's not really what you're proud of. It yeah. could be something that is completely different. But if you say, well, here's what I do on a regular basis, things I'm working on. And you're like proud to tell them about it, whoever that is. And it sounds like with what you're currently working with, that's how you feel. Yeah. And I think like your sense of pride should also be your sense of direction. Yeah. Um, Ooh. Because not a lot of people, I'm sure nobody answered with a material thing. Like I'm not proud of the car that I drive yeah. or, or the shoes that I own or anything like that. It's all, you know, kind of life based experience based. Hell yeah. Love it. Number three, one thing you wish you could change. Um, I mean, the cliche answer would be nothing. Yeah. Um, well, so it is maybe that, right? But what me and Trey talked about a little bit too was the thing you might want to change sometimes would change who you are. So you wouldn't really change it, but like, right. but there's that thing that maybe you wish was different potentially. I, I wish I would have known earlier on that um, I was going to be okay. <clears throat> um, yep. Just like, you know, because you kind of put yourself, you're, you're your own worst critic if, if you're a high performer. Um, and you're always hypercritical of the things you're doing and am I taking the right steps? Am I taking enough steps? Am I working hard enough? Um, and there's a lot of times, I mean, especially like the early days of the gym where I was trying to figure out like working a nine to five, like do, doing strength coach stuff on the side, seeing what you were doing. And I was like, man, I'm never going to make it. But just understanding that the being in the room was enough and, you know, providing value, things like that were going to get me to where I needed to be. And those are the things that people try to instill to you from a young age, like be a good person, have good values, ethics, morals, all those things. Um, and people lose track, but those things are really like the compass that takes you to where you need to be and puts you in the right rooms. So you wish you would have trusted yourself earlier yep. that you would be okay. Yep. If you went that path. Yeah. A hundred percent. Like knowing, I mean, even when I took the leap leaving, uh, the company to come here, there's a lot of Am I doing the right thing? Am I making the right choice? But just know that like if if you're making a decision with your heart, then you're making the right decision. I like it. Uh number four. How did you initially build confidence? What was the thing that, you know, you were involved in or did on a regular basis or went through that then upticked that that comes to mind that upticked your confidence to, you know, continue to the next thing? Yeah, weightlifting. Yeah. Yeah, that was the point where I was like, I, I was never super confident, especially as an athlete. Like, I knew I was good, but I yeah. didn't really train seriously, and I didn't know that I was, like, capable of doing anything. I kind of had that limitation. Like, I'm not going to be, like, a super good athlete or anything like that. But when I started weightlifting and then I was like, okay, I'm getting better than people that just aren't doing anything. And that physical separation gave me mental separation also. Ooh, I like that. I like that. Uh, number five. <coughs> Excuse me. What's success mean to you? Um, being being proud of yourself and um, just knowing that that you live the life that you wanted to. Like I wake up every day thinking that I'm successful, and it doesn't go back to like I said the car I drive or the the money in the accounts or anything like that. The things I own, it's the experiences and the people that I've been blessed to be around and you know have, form relationships with. Um, and I think I'm successful now just because of the, the room I'm in and the things that, you know, go on between these walls. Um, so as long as I'm happy, I'm successful. Well, and the things that you're involved in, the things you're working on, the things you aspire to continue to do. I think that everyone that's been here so far, this is their, their answers to this are really similar because mm -hmm. I think when you work in this outside, and box, outside the box environment, coming from an inside the box environment, you realize how limited you are, right? And the other thing to maybe achieve maybe a potentially more, I guess, uh, material things. But I would argue that this environment allows you to have no cap, essentially, right? Yeah. If we build it big enough. So it's like, I think I, my answer at your guys' age would have been maybe not because you're 30, right? Mm -hmm. When I was like 22 would have been stuff yep. because I just didn't know any better, right? So I hear very like, mature answers from you guys and know that my answers would have been not that great back then. I got this, I got wiser as I got older. Right. right. But the reality is, is that when I achieved this stuff, 
I've still put more value on the stuff that you guys are saying at younger ages because that's actually what it's about. Right. You know, so great job. Um, number six, what is one piece of advice that you would leave everyone? So you only have, you can only write down one thing, can only tell them one thing, and it could be based on anything, but it's like, what is the one piece that Tyler Treadway at this point in his life would leave to everyone? My favorite thing to tell people, because people have asked me this, and my favorite thing to say is don't give a fuck what anybody says about you or what they think about you. I'm going to be myself every single day, and if somebody doesn't like it, that's on them. And so many times people get put in boxes, whatever. When I was in corporate America, it was every day. I felt so unauthentic. I didn't feel like myself. I felt like I was just putting on this mask. And now I feel like I can be myself. And if I, I'm in an environment that promotes that everybody has this opportunity to be themselves and to say and do what they feel. Um, and then when I go places, like when I'm coaching a soccer game and somebody gets mad at me for getting a little upset, I'm like, I don't give a fuck Yeah, (laughs) because I'm being myself. And if you don't like it, that's probably saying more that you're insecure about yourself that I just don't care what anybody thinks about me as long as I'm being a good person yeah. right within reason um I just don't care what anybody has to say about me what was the main I guess indicator that let you become that free on that though because like I've operate similar but it still creeps in and then it's like but how do you continue that to to be able to operate like that if I continue to talk to high level people and operate with people like yourself with the people here and they fuck with the authentic version of me why would the people outside these walls not fuck with that person? Yeah. And if they do, if they don't, then fuck it. Then I don't care. The people that I care about are obviously family and and the people in this room. So it's like, if they all believe me and they all like the person that I am, then why do I care what Johnny down the street thinks about me dragging a sled down the road? You know what I mean? Like things like that. If they all believe in you. Yeah. Yeah. I saw something where he's like, why does it matter if, you know, J one, two, five, seven on fucking Facebook says something else. Yeah. If somebody, (laughs) I had a guy that got on my Instagram and said that I sounded like the dumbest person he's ever heard talk. And I was like, (laughs) I was like, thanks man. I I appreciate that. And I just, I was just pointing back. I said, that's, that's awesome. You must not listen to a lot of people talk. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, man, it it was something that I said and I felt. So why do I care what some random person on the internet thinks yeah. about what I have to say? When I started answering people, I love you too. Yeah. That was one of my favorite things. People don't know how to, they don't know how to react to that. They either don't respond or they're like, Hey man, I'm really sorry. Yeah, and then yeah. you just, you uncover their insecurities. Yeah. It's amazing. Six life questions with Tyler Treadway. Good job, brother. Cool. Thanks G. All right. We out.